So this is my homemade heavy lift quadcopter. It runs Turnergy AeroDrive SK3 4240 530 kV motors with 15 by 5.5 inch carbon fiber propellers. These are all controlled by a 4-in-1 T-motor F55 amp speed controller, which is powered by two 3-cell 5,000 milliamp LiPos in series. And boy, does it have some power. The flight controller is an Omnibus F4 V6, which when paired with the FreeSky X8R receiver, allows for telemetry down to my transmitter. It also has a BN880 GPS module, which means that when I flick a switch, it flies back and lands itself. The electronics are pretty essential to making a drone fly. However, what makes this drone interesting is that I fully designed it myself and CNC cut it in my shed. It's mostly a carbon fibre construction with 20mm carbon fibre tubular arms and legs as well as the mainframe being cut from 3mm carbon fibre sheet. The arms and mainframe plates are brought together using 3D printed parts as well as the clamps which hold the legs to the arms. This makes for a pretty light construction which allows it to carry more weight and also fly for longer when there's less weight attached to it. Now you might be wondering why did I go through so much effort to CNC cut my own drone frame from carbon fibre? whereas I could have just bought a cheap one from China that's already made. Back in 2015, I was studying in my second year of university and I was big into drone racing, so much so that I decided to actually design and build my own drone frames. In fact, here's an early prototype of one of my drone racing frames, which is actually the first one and I cut it by hand with a Dremel. Although this was only five years ago, it seems like it's been ages for me uh, due to so many different changes like leaving university and mostly because back then I was using Google SketchUp to design uh, parts which, uh, god that seems a long time ago. So it got pretty serious with designing the drone racing frames and I actually started getting them uh, mass manufactured in China and I would sell them here in the UK. And that's why I have this CNC machine. Basically I built this whole shed and bought this CNC machine just to manufacture some of these drone frames to sell. And that's basically why I cut my own drone frame. I just had a load of carbon fiber laying around, a CNC machine, why not put the two together? Now CNC cutting carbon fiber is a bit of a nightmare as the dust isn't the safest thing to inhale. Uh, so I actually cut it underwater. Uh, this is a heavy duty gardening tray, which I found on eBay. And then I've got a carbon fiber sheet in here, which I can cut the parts out of. And I just circulate water through a bucket down here and it keeps all the dust nice and contained under a damp layer. Ugh. If you have your own CNC machine and 3D printer or know of services nearby, I will be uploading the files for this drone onto Thingiverse. I'll be uploading these CNC files as probably DXF files or some other 2D file so that people don't try and 3D print the mainframe plates. Uh, but you can go check out the link in the description below if you want to build your own. Right, what have I not covered? Uh, flight time. As I mentioned earlier, it runs these two three cell 5,000 milliamp packs in series to make a six cell 5,000 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery. And it draws about 260, 280 watts uh, whilst hovering with no payload. This means it gets about 20 to 25 minutes of flight time. Now in terms of payload capabilities, I believe it should be possible to lift five kilograms of weight. Uh, I've only tested it up to three kilograms and it seemed to handle it fine. Uh, in total, there's about 10 kilograms of thrust, uh, minus two kilograms for the weight of the drone, then minus probably 700 grams for the lithium polymer batteries. And then obviously you don't want to be running these at 100% throttle. Um, it's probably running on the limit at five kilograms maybe. But three kilograms is probably a safe limit and it's probably more than most of the projects I'm going to be dropping from it anyway. Also, if you watched my Dan Busters video on my main channel, you probably would have noticed that the arms were quite a bit shorter in that video. Now, when I originally built this drone uh, a few months ago, I actually built it with this length of arm. However, I ran into issues when I was first testing it. It was a dodgy accelerometer on the flight controller, which meant when it was set to auto level mode, it wouldn't go to level. <laughs> if I let go of the stick for more than a second, it would basically do a 45 degree bank to the right and it crashed into a tree twice. It was a flight controller which I was familiar with. I used it on all my projects, including my reaction wheel drone, my gas thruster drone, my Coanda effect drone. Um, so I, that was the last thing I thought it would be. So what I did is I balanced all the motors, balanced all the propellers, uh, changed uh, some of the filtering settings in the flight controller. All looked fine when it was on the ground, but when it was in the air, it just kept crashing. So I thought, 
I've shortened the arms to see if it changes the natural frequency of the drone and it still did it. Then I just thought, I've tried everything else, let's change the flight controller and that was it. So I kept the short arms on for the Dam Busters video, uh, but then after that I decided to put longer arms back on it. Uh, the reason why I have such long arms and propellers that don't really come near to each other is that I want to have a section in the middle of the drone where there's uh, not much airflow coming down. Therefore, if I want to uh, lift up a plane and drop a plane from there, I'm not blocking a lot of the thrust uh, if I put a wing like straight through the middle here or up here. One final thing was that these propellers are actually, I think they're called T-mount propellers. Uh, instead of having a center hole through the middle, uh, like most smaller propellers for the smaller drones, they actually have three holes and you have two bolts going through uh, each outer hole and these motors did not have the correct mount for uh, these propellers. So I actually had to 3D print my own adapter which would interlock over the propeller mount on the Turnergy motor and then two bolts would clamp the propeller to it. This would then be just locked down and held in place by this nut on the top. So the friction between the nut, this washer and the propeller is not essential to this propeller coming loose. I can loosen this nut by quite a bit and the propeller would still stay locked to the motor the nut is just preventing the propeller from flying off this way. So I think that's most of the stuff for this drone. Uh, I'm sure if you have another question, you can ask it down in the comment section down below. But that's it for this second channel video. Hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next video. Goodbye.